Spicy P makes a spicy return to Toronto, and we missed him. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Raptors NBA podcast. We are your hosts, Alex Jobin and Andy Redding, bringing you the top Raptors news and our opinions of what's happening in the league. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure to do so. Subscribe on Spotify, get up on Apple Music, Instagram, all that good stuff. If you're not subscribed just yet, what are you doing? Like, what are you even doing with your life if you're a Raptors fan? What are you doing? What are you doing? Give your head a Subscribe right now. Honestly, pause this podcast and go subscribe to the podcast on all platforms. All right? Let's get into it. Last night, Pascal Siakam recently traded over to the Indiana Pacers. He's back in town. It was a heartfelt welcome back moment for Spicy P. And um, I don't know. It just really showed how much our fans love the guy. There's that one photo of all of those people in the stands wearing his jersey, and it was literally like an entire section of the stadium was wearing his jersey. I have his jersey. I know 100 people that have his jersey as well, and it just seemed like everybody loved him so much. Um, I don't know, Andy, what would you think of his return? Well, let's let's keep it real for our listeners first. That one section, very nice touch, everyone wearing his jersey, but they did give away jerseys to that one section. So... It's not like everyone came out with a Pascal jersey. It was a nice touch by MLSC to do that, I think. Uh, another nice touch by MLSC. Uh, this was a very different return. They had his video package and ceremony before the game. Every other guy you see, it's in like the first time out, the second time out. They took time away before the game to have a proper ceremony where he could come out on the court and just feel the love. And I think it was really nice. I think it was extra special. I have to say, I don't like the way that they cut those clips. Because I saw it, it was weird. Because like the championship was in the middle of those clips, and then it kept going back and forth from when he was younger to when he was older to the championship to back when he was younger to when he was older. Like I don't know. I didn't think it was it was cut up as well as it could have been, but that's just me. And also to your other point, yeah, they gave out a bunch of or like those actual whatever the the t shirts with his um with his jersey no, on. Gave him jerseys. Did they give everyone jerseys? I thought they were t-shirts. In that one section of the lower bowl, they gave out jerseys to everyone. There was like signs on their seat that said, hey, come pick up a jersey. Okay, wow. Well, I did not know that. I thought I thought they were just t-shirts, first of all. and But I also know that there's so many people in the stadium who are actually wearing Pascal jerseys that I couldn't tell the difference between that section and the rest of the stadium. Just because, like, man, everyone I know has a Pascal jersey. You know, I don't have a Pascal jersey. I know, ex- other than you. Other than you. <laughs> But I don't know. It's It seemed like, for me, like he... I thought he was going to cry or at least tear up or something. There wasn't much emotion. I thought there was emotion. I thought he was soaking it in. He was very thankful. He looked relieved and happy. I don't know. There was probably a lot of anxiety for him. He had been talk of trade rumors and people hating on his contract for years. And then he came back and got a nice, healthy ovation. I do thought it was think, nice. Do you think that he is happy that he's out of the city and out of the situation? Or do you think that he like, he wishes he could have remained a Raptor this season? Cause honestly, like it, it just, I don't know, man, Indiana is such a weird place to go. Nobody wants to go to Indiana. I think nobody wants to go there at first, but I think just watching him play a few games with the Pacers. I think he looks genuinely happy there. I think he's fitting in. I think the Pacers crowd is treating him really nice. He's feeling appreciated for the first time in a few years. Like, I don't think he's been appreciated in Toronto since 2020. I agree, but I'll push back a little bit. I've watched a lot of their games. It doesn't seem like he's fitting in all that well, honestly, to me. Just from from an, just an eyeball perspective, it seems like he's a little bit delayed on stuff. He's not – like, he's obviously just getting into the offense, but it seemed like it seems like him and Halliburton haven't really gelled just yet. So he's a little bit delayed on stuff. And it seems like his offensive style doesn't really match what the Pacers have. So I don't agree that that he's fitting in and that he's gelling with the team. I think it's like... the question that he's happy, though? You weren't asking me if he's gelling and playing well with the team. No, no, I know. But you just said that he's... I thought that you just said that he's, like, happy on the team. Yeah, I think he looks extremely happy. I think he feels respected by people. He doesn't... It's not the... Not in trade rumors all the time. I may agree with that, but I just I don't think I don't think this is a good fit. I'll come out and say it. I don't think this I don't think he's gonna make a difference for that team 
in terms of making a playoff push at all, unfortunately. Why are you so down on the Pacers? They're a really good team. A lot of upside. Well, they're they're 31 and 25. They're 14 and 14 away. Pascal, like last night, he had 23 points, five boards, seven assists. He took over he in the second 17 half. from the field goal. Yeah, I I know. But I feel like him and Halliburton kind of go to the same spots a lot. I don't know. I just don't I just don't see this being a good fit in the long run, especially if they're making if they're trying to make a deep playoff push. I know obviously they beat the Raptors last night, so score was 127-125, but the Raptors aren't going anywhere and the Raptors look like they should have probably won that game, the majority of the game. So maybe they haven't gelled yet. I don't know. Are you you're high on the are you high on the Pacers? I think they could be a conference finalist, yeah. I'm very high on them. They are nice. They are fast. They are deadly. I think you can shut down Halliburton, but you're still going to have Pascal. That's having a secondary score there now is going to be amazing for them. I think they're a playoff nightmare. It's going to be hard to match up against them. Give them 30 more games to stylistically fit together better. Halliburton had 21, 12 assists, four boards couple of steals. Um, Nemhart, 14 points, five assists. Isaiah Jackson, 15 points, 11 boards. I don't know. Obi Toppin, 15 points. You know, it's funny. So we're going to talk about the NBA All-Star Weekend later on in this podcast. I thought it was initially Obi Toppin that was in the dunk contest, but it's actually his younger brother. Um, But anyways, back to this for a second. I think that Obi Toppin is just like a piece of of this team that could have grown significantly faster if Pascal wasn't, you know, wasn't brought into the rotation. Like, I just think that, I don't know how you can see this team being a a conference finals team. I just don't see it. That's like saying in 2019, Kawhi was going to get in the way of Pascal growing. No, it didn't. Having more good players on a team doesn't make that younger player worse. If anything, it elevates the whole boat. And I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know how Obi you're Toppin seeing. Is not a dude. Obi Toppin is not a guy that is going to make a difference in a playoff series like Pascal can. Like you take the less shots for Obi Toppin every day to get more shots from Pascal. Okay, so right now the Pacers are sixth in the East. Are they beating the 76ers? They can give him a run. Are they beating the Knicks? They can give him a run. I think they have a puncher's chance in any. Are of these they series. beating the Bucks? They can give them a run. I just I think they'll beat anyone except the Celtics. Are they beating the Cavs? Are they beating the Celtics? The answer f- for all of those is a hard no, Andy. No, I think they they're not beating any of those teams. There's no chance they're making the Eastern Conference Finals. No chance. Okay? I don't know why you're, like, bringing out this random point that you're... Like, there's literally... There's no chance the Pacers are beating the 76ers, especially if Embiid's back. The Knicks, the Bucks, the Cavaliers, or the Celtics. And... Keep in mind, the Heat are in seventh, so they're right behind them. I don't think they're being the Heat either. Stop and honestly, them. the Magic are more talented than the, the, the Pacers. You owe me $100 for the, your Magic takes. Don't The Magic stop. are more talented than the Pacers. The Pacers suck. The Pacers are not good. And adding Pascal Siakam was a nonsense move. It, it doesn't seem like the whole team fits. I think there's no way they're coming close to the Eastern Conference for its finals. I feel like they'll go second round maybe. They'll lose in six games in the second round to somebody. This is the highest scoring team in the NBA, and you don't think they can win a playoff round? No, I don't. I think highest they can maybe team. win one. They can win one playoff round. But if they play the if they play the the seventy sixers right now, obviously without Embiid, I don't know. With Embiid, they'll get murdered. Don't you think? Murdered? No. Miles Turner can bang with Embiid. No, he can't. They got guys. They got dudes. Miles Turner cannot bang with Embiid. And Bede is going to struggle to run with this team. You're this is like ridiculous. This is one of your uh, wild takes. I don't think I'm not going to put money on it, but I think they have a chance of making the conference final. Why don't we do a friendly bet? I think they'll win a playoff round. Let's do a friendly $500 bet that they're not making the Eastern Conference Finals. I don't think they're going to. I think they have a chance. I think they'll win. A, I think realistically they'll win around and get bounced in the second. But, like, when I just listed off those teams, you can't tell me you think that they're better than any of those teams. You're saying they have a puncher's chance. Yes, I'm not saying better, but I think they could win a seven-game series. So, you're t- like, it's quite a reach from a puncher's chance to the Eastern Conference Finals, don't you think? 
I think Eastern Conference Finals is their ceiling, kind of like the Raptors in 2015. They almost lost to the Raptors last night, and we're 12th in the East. The Raptors are not good. That's okay. Even though, even though, you know what? Let's talk about the Raptors for a minute, okay? Just to switch gears. We can keep arguing about this. I think the Pacers are not good. You think they're incredible for some reason. I just I think I don't understand. Very competent. Okay. <laughs> very competent teams don't make the Eastern Conference Finals. You just you took a few steps back there. Um Scotty Barnes, 29 points, 12 boards, eight assists, another good game. Uh RJ Barrett really impressed me last night. I love the how hard he goes to the basket. And one plays, hard takes. He has that weird right-handed finish, and he's always looking at his right hand. He's been right last night. That was nice. Yeah, he was not wrong last night. He was right. <laughs> no, but he went right a, quite a few times. He hit a couple threes. What was he from the three-point line? So he was actually he was one of three. Nine for 17. Um, What else? What else here? There was some other stat. But yeah, nine boards, three assists. Like, I don't know. I feel like if... He gets a little bit better from the three point line. The team's going to be much better, but I don't know. Like, what did you think of the Raptors last night? What do you think of them overall? Because they look good to me. I think you're overvaluing Barrett's game a little bit here. I think he's been inefficient on offense. He does drive play a lot, but I think he's missing a lot of shots. He's got a step to take. I'm not as excited as you are. He is. If he's your highest volume shooter, you're probably not winning much, which is what the Knicks ended up realizing. Andy, he's shooting 47.5% from the field. Like, that's really good. I, I think, again, going back to what Dan mentioned before, it seems like a few of these positions, a few of these guys are, you know, uh, stepping on each other's toes. When it comes to, like, ball handling, taking to the – like, Emmanuel quickly and Scotty Barnes – handle the ball a lot of the time. And I saw that wild stat on the NBA um on the NBA All-Star page. This is actually a really interesting stat about Scotty Barnes. It's actually a negative stat, but he scored 0. 0.71 points per possession on isolations according to synergy tracking, the lowest mark among 50 players with at least 75 isolation possessions. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that the guys around him aren't knockdown shooters. Right, like if instead of R.J. Barrett or Emmanuel Quickly, he had a couple of guys who could hit threes. And not saying that those guys can't hit threes, but I'm saying like maybe eventually when they work up to hit more threes, he would be significantly better in isolation. But it feels like, you know, it's tough for him to kick the ball out and then have people miss three point shots. So I don't know. Like I feel like they do step on each other's toes a lot. Um, but I love the fact how R.J. is going to the rim every every chance that he gets. He keeps getting at ones. What do you think exactly. of that? Do you think that do you think that they overlap? I think every team has players who overlap. I think the Raptors in 2019 had players who overlapped. I think it's just how you work together. It's you can make this argument for any team. I don't, I don't, know. Think, I don't think I don't think the Knicks have too many players that overlap. You know, like I don't think the Knicks uh like I think every single one of their positions does a job. I feel like most teams that are on conference finals runs don't have positions that overlap. Like we just talked about the Pacers, Pascal definitely overlaps with a couple, you know, a couple of their bigs. Like who's here? Who's their center? Like even like we talked about Obi Toppin. Turner? No, you did. Yeah, yeah, Miles Turner plays the four Obi all Toppin's, the time as well. Obi Toppin's a depth guy. He's not someone you overlap with. Well, That's not. If anything, o the Pacers Obi Toppin got 25 minutes last night, Andy. Yeah, he's a good off the bench, right? Yeah, off the bench, but yeah, that's not overlapping. He was still on on the court with Pascal a lot last night. That's like the Raptors had Freddie and Kyle. Did they overlap? No, they were amazing together. Yeah. Every team has these overlappings. I don't think so. I think most championship teams don't have players that overlap as much. Everyone plays their roles and they play um and they play cohesively. Okay, let's hold on. Let me let me look here. Okay, who else? Um I wanted to talk about our boy Jakob because I just love the fact that I don't know, he's like a trustworthy player. I don't know why you hate on him so much. Well, maybe I do know why. 
But mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people gave the Raptors a lot of hate for, you know, picking them up, losing that first round pick. But in my opinion, it's really tough to find a big man like this who could get you, who can basically average a double double for the entire season. Like last night, he had 19 and 11. He's a dependable big. You know, I really like our team. I just feel like there has to be a few, you know, that we have to have a few tweaks here and there, and then the team will be better. I really liked what I saw last night, honestly. What do you think about Jakob? Jakob Pertle is the guy you pick up when you're a piece away from contending. That's that's that trade. You don't make that piece, you don't make that trade when you're entering a rebuild. That's the critique of the Pertle trade is the timing of it. I don't it's think not, we're in a rebuild. We're one of the the Raptors are one of the worst teams in the league. I think the Raptors are in a retool they just, phase. They just traded away all their best players and they're rebuilding around their young star player. This is the definition of a rebuild. First of Except all, they, they did not trade away their best players because their best player is Scotty Barnes. Okay. And their then best. they traded OG for a couple really nice pieces that are That's playing rebuild. well. It's not rebuilding, it's retooling. What are we arguing over here? This is they are a bad team. They're not sniffing the playoffs. They probably won't next year. They could get worse next year. How many games are the Raptors out of a playing spot? You are not still thinking this. Yes, I am still thinking this. They are five games out of a, the last playing spot. They're not making it. <laughs> Damn, that's a lot of games. And then even what's the point of getting in the last playing spot? That's They're a lot not of games out of a playing spot. All right, let's move on. Clearly, we're both a little frustrated, both a little upset. Speaking of upset, just one more. We haven't, uh, we didn't do a pod the other day mm-hmm. after two games ago. How do you feel about Scotty leaving three seconds early? I don't know. I'm just kind of like, it goes back to what I was saying before. Like, you don't want to have a situation where a guy is frustrated with the team, frustrated with everybody, and then you know, stuff like this starts happening. What what did you think? Uh, it made me think that he doesn't respect the coach very much. And it made me a little scared that Darko could be a one and done guy. Like they could look in the off season and be like, our star player doesn't have any respect for you. We're going to look elsewhere. This experiment with Darko is not working out. Does, does Scotty walk away if Doc Rivers is the coach? Probably not. Again, I think it goes back to when you have a guy who's that competitive and the team that you're playing with isn't competitive, that's going to start leaking into his, you know, his personality. His he's not going to be as invested in these games. You know what I mean? And then when he's not invested, he doesn't want to be playing. Like I I don't know. I just feel like I feel like there's always a small window with these superstar level players. I'm not saying he's a superstar, but like fairly close. And then if you're not competing or you're not even close to competing, they start getting frustrated really quickly. And right now we're in an NBA where guys can move pretty much whenever they want, you know? So, no, like, I'm surprised, but not really because of everything that I was saying, you know? See, I don't know how you say they're like a couple tweaks away from being a good team and then talk about how Scotty's so frustrated because they're so bad. Like, well, that seems two opposite statements. Well, my point is, like, I think we haven't had an, enough of an opportunity to see this team. Like, I feel like if for the rest of the season, they start gelling a little bit, maybe they start playing better by the end of the season. You add a couple of shooters in the off season, like maybe we can keep somewhat of a similar lineup for next year and compete. Like, I'm not saying this team's going to win a championship. I think they're always a superstar away because nobody can win a championship without a superstar. We've seen that time and time again. So, like, it doesn't really matter what we do unless one of our guys turns into a superstar or we acquire one, which is unlikely. So I just think it's, like, a a growth thing with this team. Like, I feel like I like what I'm seeing, but they're not there just yet, you know? It's more than just a few tweaks. You need a lot of internal growth. A lot of it. You need your boy RJ to be an all-star. Or quickly. One of them. RJ might be an all-star. Or Grady to... Keep growing. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, let's talk about all stars. Go ahead. You ready for the all star talk? I'm ready. All star Saturday night. Personally, my favorite day of the all star weekend. Is it yours? Hundred percent. No doubt about it. Now, in my mind, there are only two contests that actually matter. We can talk about another one if you really want to, but mm. 
three point contest and dunk contests. Okay. Now you are a dunk contest expert over the years. Hundred percent. Four players competing this year. Only three NBA players competing this year. Jalen Brown. Jaime Jock. Jaime Jaquez. Jaime Fuck. <laughs> Jaime Jaquez. Jaime Jaquez. From Miami. Matt He's McClung. disgusting. And Jacob Toppin. Who's your pick? I want to say Mac McClung again, but I don't think he can pull out anything that he hasn't pulled out yet. I don't think Jalen Brown has enough bounce to win that championship or to win the to win the dunk contest. Jaime Hawkes is, is doesn't have enough bounce. He won some high school dunk competition. I remember watching that dunk competition because you know I like high school basketball. Um Me too. and and he won it. He jumped over like a couple of people. He had a couple of pretty nice dunks, had a 360, but I don't think he's got enough bounce. Jacob Toppin might come out of the out of nowhere, come off the top rope and win this thing because he's Obi Toppin's br- brother. He's got some real bounce. Um 68 200 like he has some dunks this year that are just that are that are pretty nice, but again, I'm not excited about this dunk contest lineup, honestly. Like I could see no. Mac McClung coming out of nowhere and winning it again, but I don't like the fact that there's a G League player in the dunk contest. It doesn't make sense. Like Keep that in the G League, you know? I, I don't even yeah. think it makes sense. But I don't know why Jalen Brown's doing this. Do you think he has a chance to win? I That's my mo- favorite part about it. We have an actual star in the dunk contest for the first time in years. A guy who's taking a risk because he's got the only thing to lose. Like everyone else is kind of just a dude. Jalen Brown has got a resume. He's got something on the line, kind of. He can embarrass himself. So I think so, I have high hopes for Jalen Brown. I think he's going to go hard. Jalen Brown has a 40-inch vertical jump. You're, are you basing your prediction on who has the highest vert? Yeah. No, 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 <laughs> no. I'm just, I just actually wanted to know what their verts are. Let's see how my Hawk has his vert. Because, not going to lie, that dunk contest, 39-inch vert. Okay, so how my Hawk has 39-inch vert. What do you think Jacob Toppin's vert is? He's young. He's still got those fresh legs. I'm going to say 41. 42.1. Or sorry, 42.5. That's up there. Damn. Okay. So he's got 2.5 inches of vert, which is quite a lot. And then Mac. Mac might just come out of nowhere here. I bet he's going to be bigger, but he's a small dude, so doesn't have as much reach. Mm, 43.5. Okay. So Mac McClung has the highest vert out of these four dunk contestants. Um, I don't know. I could see Jalen Brown winning it because of the name, but probably not. Uh, I would bet on Jacob Toppin if I was a betting man. Actually, let's look at these odds. So the dunk contest, uh, Mac McClung is favored to win minus 170. Jalen Brown plus 350. Jacob Toppin plus 425. Hame Hawkins plus 550. Man, Jacob Top, that might be a good bet at plus 425. Are you betting on Jacob Toppin purely because of his brother? Uh, yes. Because I know nobody has seen any Jacob Toppin anywhere. He's played five NBA games, just garbage time. He doesn't so, play. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I haven't seen too many of his of his dunks in whatever. In, I don't even, I don't, I don't even know if he's gone in game in the NBA. But he's got a, quite a few highlights in college where he was just slamming on everyone's head. And he was getting up there. So, I don't know. I feel like those are the guys who are underrated, who come out of nowhere and win dunk contests. But Mac McClung's plus one, or minus 170. So, he's uh, he's the favorite. By far the favorite, actually. Okay. Yeah. Let's move on to the next contest of excitement. Mm-hmm. The three-point contests. Yep. I know you're excited about this. We got, the, we got like eight guys competing, I think. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm not going to list them off, but you have the list in front of you, and you know. Who do you think is going to win? I'll just quickly list them off. Malik Beasley, Jalen Brunson, Tyrese Halburn, Damian Lillard, Laurie Markin, and Donovan Mitchell, Connelly Towns, Trey Young. Okay, so we know that Trey Young's not the best three-point shooter when it comes to uh, just catch and shoot, catch and shoot threes. Carl Anthony Towns has want, wanted to th- wait. Did he win this last year? One second. 
Yeah, three point contest. Towns also won the 2021 2022 three point contest. There. So Cat wants another one. Donovan Mitchell. No, he's never won one, obviously. Lori Markinen, pretty good three point shooter. Damian Lillard won it last year. I don't know. This is a good one. Um, I'm pretty sure this is Trey Young's first ever three point contest. Are you you're hinting that you're going Trey? Are you leaning Trey? I don't I really want to go Trey, but I don't know if I I think I have to go Damian Lillard again. Why do you have to go Dame? He won it last year. Um I think he's got something to prove this season. This might be this might add on to that a little bit. Guess yeah. who has the highest three point percentage of all the participants this year? I would don't look say, it up. Don't look it up. I'm not going to look it up. Is it Malik Beat? No, no, I can't be Malik Beasley. I'm going to say Carl Anthony Towns. Yes, you are yeah, correct. There you go. Forty four percent almost. The guy is yeah. shooting better than I realized he was. Does that translate into who wins this? I don't know. Probably not. Maybe. I don't think it will. I think Dame's got that. Yeah, but this is going to be exciting. It's one of my favorite weekends of the year. You know that. Watch the dunk contest. Watch the three-point contest. Uh, who's in the skills challenge? Tyrese Halliburton. So it's Team Pacers. Team Top Picks. So it's Paolo Bancaro, Anthony Edwards, Victor Wembanyama, and then Team All-Stars. Scotty Barnes, Tyrese Maxey, Trey Young. Ooh, skills challenge. I feel like Team All Stars has that. Trey Young, Tyrese Maxey, Scotty Barnes, all Don't three cards. Contest, isn't that contest always kind of just like dumb luck though? Yeah. Does anyone really try? Pretty much. Um, let's let's go to the actual rosters just quickly here. So <clears throat> we all know that the All Star game doesn't actually matter. Nobody really plays hard. But if you were to picture these two teams playing against each other, like for real, you know, like if the other team had to go, had, you know, there was something on the line, like something serious on the line. Like if they were to lose their salaries for the year, you know, for the rest of the year, which team would win this? So Eastern conference, Tyrese at the one, Dame at the two, Giannis at the three, Tatum at the four and beat at the five and beat not playing. Is Embiid healthy for our experiment? You know what? Let's say he's healthy. Yeah. Let's say he's healthy. Okay. If he's healthy, I take the East to win. Versus Luka Doncic, Shea Gilgis Alexander, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, and Nikola Jokic. Yeah. You take the East? I do take the East. You're like, you just are coming with these takes for no reason. I know. You're just trying to grind my gears here. Noel Embiid, the reigning MVP. That means you're the best player in the world. Giannis Antetokounmpo, arguably the best player in the world. Those are two guys that I will ride with over LeBron James, who's a little bit past it. Who's I'm not what? Gonna say. Who's what, Andy? <laughs> what bit, are you going to say about him? That he's not on the up in his career anymore. You know what? Uh, I'll ask you. Uh, I'll ask you a quick trivia question, and then we'll what? get back to this quickly because you just talked about LeBron James. Okay. How many All Star selections has he made? Or has he been? Um, look, it's on the list in front of me. I can't lie to you. Twenty. Okay, so it's twenty. Okay, so never mind. So like, I can't ask you. It's the only three people on this list that have double digit All Star selections are LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and Steve St- Stephen Curry. Steve Curry. <laughs> and Steve Curry. <laughs> no, and Steph Curry. So Steph's been a ten time All Star. He's going to be a ten time All Star this year. LeBron twenty, Kevin Durant fourteen, which is mm-hmm. wild. I think the West no bench is better. Sorry. The West bench is better. The West is much better overall. I don't care. What you say. The bench is better. No, Giannis and Joel can't play on the same court together. This is your thing. This is your thing. Guys can't play on the same court. They overlap with each other, but they both, every like, guy, they both can't shoot threes. Every all-star overlaps with each other. They can't shoot threes. Tyrese Halliburton can't shoot threes that well. Dame. Okay. Dame shouldn't have been an all-star starter. Right? Okay, every guy on the West needs the ball in their hands. Every single guy. They all overlap. No, 
Untrue. Nikola Jokic could do anything. Nikola Jokic. Can, can I ask you a question? We always argue about this. Your point is always like, whoever the last MVP was is the best player in the league. Do you really think that Joel Embiid is better than Nikola Jokic? Do you honestly think that? Or are you going to stay with your... What? Well, he's not going to win the MVP this year. Who, Jokic? Embiid, he can't. No, I know he can't. But I'm saying, do you still think that he's the best player in the league? Uh, until his injury, yes, I did. See, I he's still think... I still think Jokic was a better player this this season. Um, KD doesn't need the ball in his hands. LeBron doesn't. Well, maybe he does, but LeBron can play off ball. Nikola Jokic can play off ball. Luca. I feel like Luca's the only one on this list who like needs the ball in his hands to do anything. Shane needs the ball in his hands. Yeah, but not as much as Luca. Okay, but then you're telling me what Tyrese Halliburton doesn't need the ball in his hands. Jason Tatum doesn't need the ball in his hands. I'm using your argument. The West is just too ball dominant. Giannis doesn't need the ball in his hands. Joel Embiid doesn't need the ball in his hands. Like, what are we talking about here? I'm saying. All all these guys need the ball in (laughs) in their hands because they are the best players on their team. So you can't look at them that way. I'm ripping on your argument earlier about having teams overlapping skills. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I know, but we're comparing two all-star teams about who would win an actual championship. A healthy Embiid, I think they won. Not even close. I think it's extremely close. Well, you're wrong. I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. Uh, excited for Jalen Brunson. I don't think he's like an exciting all-star player to watch. He's not really like a big highlight guy. But I'm like just excited for him to make his first all-star team. Iris Maxey. What'd These first year guys, the first year guys will probably go harder. I think there's actually who's going to win the game. Actually, I, I honestly think it's going to be the East because they have these younger guys who are there for the first time and they aren't going to take it lightly. I think like Scotty's going to go ham. There I'll could be some value. Though. There could be some good value on All Star Game MVP with like Jalen Brunson or Tyrese Maxey or eh, I don't think Scotty. But why not? Why don't you think Scotty? <sighs> You just hate Scotty Barnes. I don't hate Scotty Barnes. No. You hate, hate our boy Scotty. I don't like that he left early. I like it. Make some changes, Raptors. Make some changes before he leaves. Okay, we've talked All Star Game. I gotta I have a new segment that I'm gonna spring onto you. How long have we been talking? Like forty five minutes or what? I have yeah, a missed call from my I have a missed call from my mom. Oh god. Are you ready for the new segment? It's very yes. quick. We're gonna play a game. Hold on, hold on. What are we going to call this? What are we going to call this segment? It's called Where Are They Now? Okay. And the question is, I give you a player who has played in it. Don't look it up. I see I'm, your fingers. I'm moving. not looking it up. You're looking it up. I'm You're looking, looking at, at you. No, I see your fingers moving. No, you Hands see up. my fingers moving. Hands up. Okay, go go ahead. It's called Where Are They Now? Okay. You're looking at your type. I'm not looking it up. <laughs> You're so typing. Okay, go, 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 go. You're typing. You I'm not typing. Okay, we're gonna play a game. It's called "Where Are They Now?" And it's a player. Yeah, that's the played, fourth time you've said that. You, it's a player who are... has played at least one NBA game in his career that you will have known of, and you gotta tell me what team he's on now. Okay. Okay. So, in our first edition, red edition of "Where Are They Now," Alex, where the hell is Kent Bazemore these days? Damn, that's a good question. Wait, he's not in the league though, is he? Could be. Could be anywhere. Could be retired. I think he's on the Shanghai Sharks. That's a great guess, but no, he's he's on Charlotte's G League team, the Greensboro Swarm. He's still going. Kent Bazemore still going. Isn't that crazy though that he's not in the NBA? I feel like he was like a really good starter. No, that's not crazy because he's like, how old is he? He's gotta be. I bet he's under thirty. No way. No, he's thirty-four. I'm so wrong. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's 34. The, all those 34 year old boys. I'm just kidding. I'm 34. That's the only reason I'm saying that. <laughs> he's young. I guess he's a four year college player. Yeah, never mind. Okay. Is that the is that the only guy you're gonna ask me about? That's it. One day we'll get one right. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. I got one for you. Okay. But we've talked about this already. Ready? Yeah, I'm just where is, where is Justice Winslow? 
Oh, he's on. He's on the nine oh five. Boom. You know how I knew the Kent Bazemore answer? Sorry. Do you know how I knew the Kent Bazemore answer? How? Because I just watched the nine oh five afternoon game today, and it was nine oh five against Charlotte. So they were going off. They're really struggling for content on that channel of yours, eh? Or was that on TSN? That was on TSN. True. Okay. Do we have anything else? Happy belated Valentine's to all our lovebird listeners. To all of our lovebird listeners. To all Happy our lovely listeners. There's always next year. That's right. Um, hold on. I want to show you one thing here. One second. Oh, no. Hold on one second. I'm just logging into our account. For anybody who's listening to this, just stay tuned. This is very exciting content to listen to. Uh, just... One note while you're logging in. Yeah, go ahead. The 905 won in overtime today. Do you know the overtime rules in the G League? No. It's the target score. So it's like seven points, just like whoever gets the seven points first in overtime. And it is so exciting. Really? You get an automatic, you get an automatic game winner every time it goes to overtime. Uh, so who ended up winning? Uh, the Raptors, or the 905 did. It was exciting. Uh, yeah, I would love the NBA to do that. I don't really care for the overtime rules right now. I do. I wish it goes into like 17 overtimes. That'd be great. Well, that's a little much. Okay, this is what I want to look up. We're going to give everybody a real-time update on what we have going on on our YouTube channel. Because I'm, I just get like excited about it every day. So real time, this is Thursday, February 15th. We're going to post this right after we're done. We currently have 87 subscribers. So since our last video, we've had, we've gotten another 15 subscribers, which is incredible. We have 30,000 views now, which is also incredible for a channel that's as new as ours. And we have 500 hours of watch time. Now, if I go into the analytics... We have 500 within the last 28 days, so we have even more than that. So I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been watching and listening and who's subscribed and who's liked our stuff, who's commented. Really, really appreciate it because this is actually like insane growth for a channel. You know, trust me, this is this is going to go really quickly. Um, and once it does, you know, everybody who's an OG fan, you better hold tight because I'm sending everyone. You know what? Never mind. I take it back. Not everybody, but we have to do a giveaway. <laughs> I think when we hit 100 subs, we should do a giveaway. What are we going to give away? Tickets? A jersey. A jersey. Yeah. Or take, I don't know. What do you want to give away? Either or. That works. Both. Should we ask people who follow us on Instagram and on TikTok what we should give away? Whether they would like either a jersey or Raptors tickets. Yeah. Let's ask that. And Slide yeah, slide in our DMs, and I'm going to post this. And, uh, yeah, we're at, like I said, what are we at? We're at 87 subscribers right now. I'm sure within a few days we'll reach 100, which is actually like a big milestone. I don't think you understand how excited I am about that. This is so hard to do, man. I'm telling you. So okay. thank you to everybody who subscribed, who's listened. Um, soon enough we'll be at 1,000. We'll be at 4,000 hours of watch time, and we'll be monetized. And, um, you know, let's just keep it rolling, Drew. Big Drew. The listeners really want to know when we're monetized. They really care about that. I, I think that people care about the journey. Right? Sure. Sure. Like your journey from in your job, if you want to tell people, which you probably don't. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. People I listen like, to this podcast like for Raptors and NBA content. No, people care. People absolutely care, 100%. Um, people get invested into the people that they listen to, you know? And again, we'd like to thank you for that. At least I would. Andy doesn't really think you care about us. You just care about the the Raptors, which is probably true in a lot of cases. But I guarantee you, some people care about what we have to say. All right? They're just using us for NBA content. Hey, hey, don't sell yourself short, okay? Anyways, I love you. Love you too. Happy Valentine's Day.